<laughs> right. What's going on, everyone? My name is KJ Kaya. I'm a part of HMG Entertainment, and I'm very grateful to have Glenn Terrell with me right now. Yes, sir. I'm Glenn Terrell, uh, founder of HMG, the greatest rapper alive. Um, let's get this started. Let's get this started. All right, how are you? You good? I'm blessed. You're blessed? I'm blessed. I can't right. complain. I like I hearing complain. that answer. All right. Complain. First question. Yes, sir. Who's Glenn Terrell? Who is Glenn Terrell? Um, depends what day you get him. Depends what day you get him. Uh, <laughs> one day you might get the, the kid that's trying to save the world. Okay. One day you might get the kid that's trying to say fuck the world. So it depends on the day. But other than that, greatest rapper alive, greatest rap artist ever. I like that, yeah. Type shit like that, yeah. And so what does HMG mean? Uh, it means whatever you want it to stand for. I mean, when I first started it, it was hustle, maintain, and grow. But as I started to grow, I started to expand my thinking. Um, it means whatever you want it to mean, truthfully. Yeah. So, so that acronym can stand for, for like whatever we want it to stand for. Hoes, money, and gold, uh, <laughs> hustle, maintain, and grow. Whatever you want that shit to stand for, that's what it stands for. Whatever in your heart, just follow your heart, whatever it stands for, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. And, you know, why are we in the classroom right now? Like, can you uh, tell us how some of this relates to, to some of the themes that we hear about in HMG? Uh, yeah, that's the setting for my project. Um, when I was making this project, um, for some reason, that's what, that's some, it just stuck to me. I didn't know why yet. I didn't know why until I finished it, until I started piecing it all together. Then it finally made sense why. But, yeah, that's why we're here. Okay. That's why we're here. It's, it's kind of crazy, though. I was never good in school, so... That's, that's that's some crazy shit. I was never good in school, but we in the school, so. Hey, but you good on the mic, man. That's all that matters. Greatest. Yeah. Greatest. And you know, so I've had this tape since December of, uh, of 2020. We're currently in July 2021. And even though I've listened to it a numerous amount of times, you know, mm -hmm. there's still symbols, motifs, you know, underlying concepts that I'm still discovering. And so my question is, how do you blend this into your music? Um, that's, that's a great question. Uh, it's an old saying that my people always say, um, putting the medicine in the Kool-Aid. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the greatest saying. Um, a lot of people in our generation, they don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the knowledge. Most of them like, turn that shit off, Sharif. Turn, we ain't trying to hear that shit. No preaching and shit. So yeah. um, I'm the same way. I'm not trying to, if I'm listening to music, I'm not trying to hear nobody preach a sermon on the fucking mic or nothing like that. Yeah. So. Uh, that's just my duality, you know what I mean? That's just me knowing both sides of the fence. Um, knowing what people wanna hear and how people wanna hear it, and still adding in what they need to hear, just having a balance, you know what I mean? Life is a balance, that's how I look at it. So I, I take the same approach with my music and with my art. Right, and so for this tape specifically, what was it intentional? Like how, tell me a little bit about the creative process for this tape. Oh, that's a good question. The creative process, um, when I started it, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I, didn't know, I, was just, I was just creating, I was just making music, you know what I mean? That's what I do. And then I'm starting to listen back to these songs and I'm starting to play these songs. And I'm like, this this means something. Like this, I could, I could put something together with this shit. Like I'm listening, because in the process of me making this, I'm, I'm still growing as an artist. I'm still not even sure if I, want to do music so I'm just making music and I'm getting better every time I'm making a song keep getting better keep getting better keep getting better and then I sat down for a minute and played it back I'm like damn this shit hard than a motherfucker you know what I mean this shit yeah. hard and I was like I want to I want to put together a project with these songs you know what I mean yeah. and I went from there just step by step going back editing things um so it can all flow along together so, so you didn't set out to incorporate like all of this, these, these webs of topics together, right? Not till later on. Oh, wow. Not till later on when the music was done. Okay. When the music was done, that's when, that's when I was like, yeah. I, it just made sense for it to come together? Yeah, out of epiphany, out of epiphany. Okay. That's, that's, the, that's the best word I could say, out of epiphany. Okay. Out of epiphany, and I was like, I'm gonna do something with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell a story, I'm gonna set a theme, I'm gonna have a setting, I'm gonna have a, it's gonna be something more than just the music. It's gonna be an experience. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. That part. Yeah, and just to backtrack a little bit, yes, sir. Um, you know, I, I I mentioned that I had this tape since December of 2020, but you did something that only bigger artists tend to do. What's that? And that's you sat on your music for a significant period of time. 
Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, I sat on, that's one reason. Another reason, um, I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all because I love y'all, I love my fans. <laughs> I was, I was fucking up. I was fucking up in life. I was fucking up in life. Uh, I was fucking up and my head wasn't there. My head wasn't there. Um, I was in the right space to even release music. And just how the universe played out, certain things came apart where I couldn't release it, you know what I mean? So right. I had to I had to take a step back and get my focus ready. Cause it was, my even my engineer was telling me, he was like, bro, don't put it out if you just half-ass and if you're not focused. Cause this is, this is a, a timeless piece of art. This is a masterpiece, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I took that into consideration. And while we're on this topic, I wanna, I wanna uh, give a special thank you to my sister. All the people that love this project, thank my sister, for sure. Thank my sister. Um, if it wasn't for her, this project wouldn't be out. Um, she let me go out and stay with her in Atlanta to get my mind right. Um, even when I got there, I was still low-key fucking up. I was still low-key fucking up. And then I had like I had a low point. I had a low point. Um, I bapped her car. I bapped her car. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's funny looking back at the shit now. But at the moment, I was I was I was I was down bad. I was fucked up. And and um, I mean, me personally, I I never want to see my family members cry or have mm -hmm. tears of any any type. And especially if it's coming from me. That shit, that shit hit a soft spot. And um, even my mama called me. My mama called me, cause she called my mom when it happened. And my mama called me and she's like, you, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your life? And then I hit that low point. And then I was like, I looked in the mirror. I was like, Glenn, you gotta get this shit together. You, yeah. I'm one foot in with some bullshit. And then I'm one foot in with the music. I'm like, you gotta make up your mind. You either gonna do this or you not. And when I was out there, I, I, I had a lifestyle change. You know what I mean? I, I just, I had, to, I had to take myself back from things that I loved, you know what I mean? I had to make a, a lot of sacrifices, and then I wrote down my plans. I wrote down my plans, what I wanted to do. When I got back, I hit the ground running, and then life happened again. I ended up catching the motherfucking corona. I ended up catching, oh. cor yeah, I ended up catching corona. That set me back for another, it set me back a little bit more, but it all, it all came out to, it all came out But it, it, it kept you inside, it kept you thinking, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that happened because I seen something that I wasn't seeing when I was moving around. When I was, I, when I had the corona, I was just sitting in a dark ass room. I was in, sitting in a dark ass room. <laughs> That's how it was uh, depressing. Listening to ocean sounds and shit, just trying to ease my mind. And I did a lot of thinking in that dark room. And um, I seen something that I need to see. Good. And it helped a lot. And now we're here. So you rolled the dice? Hell yeah. Roll the dice. Hell yeah, yeah, for sure. So, going back to, to, you know, sitting on the music for a significant period of time, because it dropped on, on June 4th. Um, so, how important was the decision to sit on your music in a world of rap and hip hop that's so saturated with so many of the same styles? <laughs> uh, it was like this little wave that was going on, like the... The, the, the government aid rappers, you know the, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. I know what uh, you're talking about. Niggas get their little EDD check, they little popping for a minute. Yeah, they, it was it was like this little way that I was going around where everybody was a rapper. Yeah, it was the same the same old bullshit though. Mm -hmm. The same the guns in the video, money in the video, smoking weed, whole bunch of homies. I'm like I'm not trying to put this this shit right here should not be in the same conversation with this right here. Yeah. So I'm like let me. Let them let them shine for a little bit. This shit only gonna last about yeah. six months. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm gonna let, go ahead, do your thing. I just I dropped a couple of videos from the tape during that time. Right. And then that's when going in it, cause it was supposed to drop in December. If y'all see, if y'all watch the faded, if y'all watch the um the faded video at the end of the video, it says Hated Misunderstood Generation. It was supposed to come out in December. It says 12, and it's like <laughs> a bunch, and then 2020. But that's when I, you know what I mean? You started going through it. Yeah, it was it was like I was it was like a, a chain effect. It was gonna happen eventually. I'm glad yeah. it happened then. But yeah. Yeah, that was necessary though. For sure. Yeah. If it it wouldn't be the same experience, the same feeling if I would have dropped it in December. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel so, that. So for sure. For sure. Yeah. And so, you know, more more on that, I feel like a lot of Bay rap 
can be categorized, you know, as having a distinctive sound. Yeah. How have you chosen to either, you know, incorporate some of the, the attitude of the Bay or to deviate from that path a little bit? Uh, nah, that attitude always gonna be there. Always gonna be there? <laughs> that's, that shit always gonna be there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, when I first started rapping, what you hear, the ba the typical Bay Area sound, that's what I sounded like. Right. That's what I sounded like until someone sat me down. I played somebody in my music before. And they was like, you good, but you suck. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the fuck is you talking about? I'm, like, I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like 17 at the time. I'm like 16, 17 at the time. I'm naive, I'm like, well, this nigga hating on me, fuck him. Yeah. And he was like, nah, really go study like the greatest artists, like all the great artists. Go study Pac, go study Kendrick, go study all these great names and see, they, it's a certain energy that they put in their music. It's a certain way they go about their music. Right. And I, I took that into consideration. I went, um, I can tell you the album I listened to that changed everything, To Pimp a Butterfly by uh, Kendrick Lamar. That I listened to that album and I'm like, sheesh. <laughs> He has the attitude of like a, like a, uh, he from Compton, so he has a, he has that attitude, you know yeah. what I mean? But it's just a different way he does it, it's just a different way he approaches it. And I'm like, if I could find, if I could take pieces from all my greatest artists and build my own sound, then that's what I'm gonna do, and that's what, that's what I've been doing. But yeah, that attitude from the Bay always gonna be there. I just see that all, most of the Bay Area artists, they run into a brick wall after a while. So I'm like, why would I? If I see, if, if it's a line over here and I see them getting knocked out, why the fuck would I go that way? I'm gonna go this way. Yeah. Let me try this way. So if I, I'm not saying I'm gonna fail because I'm not gonna fail. No. This is, this, I have no doubt that I have no worries, but I'm gonna succeed on my own terms or I'm gonna fail on my own terms. I'm not gonna right. be no carbon copy of some shit that hasn't been working. That's, that's insanity. Yeah. Keep trying the same thing over and over again, wishing for a different result, that's insanity. So let me try something new. And, and is it tough to, to, you know, to see some of those artists that are popping for a minute and, you know, they, they relish in that glory for the time being, yeah. you know, and, and you've sort of taken a different route. You've taken the, the long term route. How does it feel sometimes? Does it annoy you sometimes? Uh, nah. So, I, let me put it this way. At the moment, I'll be like, what the fuck? How is this shit booming? But I remember, I'm like, that's not what you want. Right. That's not what you want. Trust me, bro. Because a lot of, a lot of, a lot of shit on social media be smoking mirrors. That shit fake. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That shit is, it's a rat race. You know what yeah. I mean? It's everybody trying to keep up with each other. Everybody trying to outdo it. So I'm not, I know that. I'm conscious of that. So I'm like, bro, I'm not even finna feed into that. I know what I'm doing. I know what my shit hitting for. I know where I'm gonna be at in a couple years. So I'm just stay focused, stay on my route, stay on my path, stick to my course, and it's all gonna pay off. Yeah, for sure. And so, um, regarding the Bay, and we talk about this a lot off camera, but um, yeah. we had two very different upbringings, yeah. you know, uh, while only living 20 minutes away, but we went to the same school. Yeah. Um, shout, you know, to the, shout out to the Catholic, men are Catholic, shout out to the Catholic. <laughs> We're all Catholic, yep. Yeah. And so, I found many themes that even I could relate to on the tape. So, yeah, talk sure. to me a little bit about how you found a way to to include people from different demographics on the tape because, you know, like I said, we had two very different upbringings, uh, yet I could still find stuff on the tape that, that I could relate to. Yeah. Um, like I mentioned before, duality, I know both sides of the fence. You know what I mean? I know both sides of the fence. I know, how do I put this? Uh, <laughs> I've been in these certain type of situations with that type of environment, mm -hmm. and I've been in that, the different type of environment. So that's just a, that's just who I am. Glen Terrell and GB. That's where that comes from. The GB is the little the little nappy of the crazy little motherfucker running around yeah. running around doing dumb shit with the homies. Glen Terrell <laughs> is the person I'm trying to grow into. The the artist, the intellect, the the philosopher, the artist, the role model, the the public figure. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And so this tape is a combination of faith, spirituality. Growing up in the Bay, Hayward to be specific, um, all the struggles that come with growing up where you grew up, uh, and, and that's just to name a few. Yes, um, how did you find a way to mesh all of these together? Was it easy? Because I mean, that's all you're seeing. Or? Yeah, that was easy. That was that was the easy part. You know what I mean? Um, people either gonna like it or they don't. That's the bottom line. Yeah. That's the bottom line. When I'm making music, I really don't care to say, oh, this is for them, this is for them. I put my true sentiments in it, so whoever relates to it, relates to it. 
I didn't have people that I thought were like this certain type of song. Like a whole <laughs> different other That's song. Crazy. You know That's what I mean? Trip, huh? Yeah, I got I got a uh I got a I got a close family member in prison. He called he called me, he listened to the tape, he called me. I thought he would like one specific song, you know what I mean? Yeah. He he caught me off guard. He's like, bro, my favorite song is Revelations. I'm like, for real? I'm like, for real, bro? I thought you were like, this shit, this hard. This is what you be into, bro. He's like, nah, bro, that Revelations, he was, you you got something, bro, just keep going. You know what I mean? And that's what, you never know. You never really know. And that's beautiful to hear because just as you compared, just as you were talking about it earlier, right? You know, GB to Glenn Terrell, yeah. you know, people can change with your music as well. Even for sure, for your sure. music can awaken something in someone else. So for sure, that's for beautiful, sure. man. For yeah, sure. for sure. That just like you said, I have grown men behind the walls in prison telling me, your words is getting me through it, little bro. Like, keep going. Like, don't let don't feed into no bullshit that's going out there. I done went through this shit for you, bro. That's that's not where it's at. What you doing right now? Keep going, bro. Your words is getting me through it. You know what I mean? So that's that's a motivation in itself. Wow. And so looking at those themes, you know, you, you've included them on this tape. How do you plan to use those themes going forward? <laughs> uh, you just got to wait and see, bro. It's, <laughs> like, I'm glad you brought that up. But yeah, this is this is only the beginning to the to the series. This is only the beginning. This is just the first tape to the series. Um, all I can say it gets. That, that's all you gonna leave us with, yeah, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all, that's all I can say. Okay. That's okay. all I can say. For sure. That's well, I'm say. looking forward to it, of course. Yeah, for sure. Um, So, you're influenced by many different sounds. As you talked about, like, listening to Kendrick, you know, the attitude from the Bay. Um, You, you know, and it's not just rap. Nah. Can you give us a little preview on what we can expect in the future? I know I know you just, you don't want to give us a little preview, but what, what other, what other types of music can we hear from Glenn Terrell? Whatever Glenn Terrell feel like making that day, whatever <laughs> mood he's in, you I, you never really know. I never really know with myself, bro. I'd be surprised. My, I, I, I'd be surprised myself. Like, damn, man, you, <laughs> you bro. What the, <laughs> you, you pulled that off. But yeah, uh, you just got to wait and see. Okay. You gotta, but you'll never, what you expect, you won't. Like, you just don't expect anything from me don't on our toes. yeah don't don't think oh he's this type of artist or he's this type of art this type of rapper this type of, i'm an artist i'm an art i'm an artist i'm not a rap i'm not just a rapper i'm an artist you know what i mean wow. it's, it's bigger than yeah it's big like just songs like revelations that's a spoken word poetry yeah Who, what i was 19 18 19 <laughs> when i did that what 18 19 year old you know doing that and they can still turn around make a song like faded yeah, you, you separating know. yourself. And then a song like Love Me or Hate Me. Then a song yeah. like Just Friends. You feel me? Yeah. It's all over the place, but it still, it still fits. Yeah, and so that comes from you just being able to listen to different forms of music, huh? For sure. Because sure. a lot of the times, I mean, I'll, I'll get in a car with someone and, you know, I'll hear the same type of music, right? Yeah. But, you know, like what you got in your library right now? What you been listening to? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, lately, Anderson Pack. The Weeknd, Tupac, Angie Stone. Um, I've been listening to a lot of blues. Uh, yeah. uh, Gary B.B. Coleman, Big Daddy Wilson. This guy is crying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's, what's, ah, I forgot his name. He looked like Billy Ray Cyrus. I forgot his name. Gene Deere, Gene Deere, Gene Deere, the Midnight Healing. That's my shit. That's my For real? Yeah, that's my okay, shit. Okay, I'm gonna have to tune into that's that. That's my shit. To Anybody tune. watching this, go listen to uh, Midnight <laughs> Healing by Gene Deere. Y'all gonna love that shit. Cool. I've been listening to Michael Jackson too, some Quincy Jones. It's all over the place. Man, you know? you just named, man, we can we can expect to hear some of these things coming up, like some pop, some pop, some blues, maybe something like that. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. All right, cool. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right, so. Let's talk about the moniker of Lil Fish from the Bay. I mean, it seems pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. But what burdens come with being the Lil Fish from the Bay? Being overlooked. But I love that though. I love that. I'm big on the element of surprise. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Dude, if you ever been in school, you know the loud mouse. Yeah. I'm gonna fight him after school. I'm gonna, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna do this. And then when it's time for action, <laughs> they got caught. They got cold feet, you know yeah. what I mean? They hot-headed, but got cold feet. Do all the talking. I'm the type of person, I'm just gonna show you. 
I'm not saying anything violent or anything, but I'm yeah. just saying as far, as far as my demonstration, I'm not gonna tell you, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna just do it. Right. And it's sometimes being too humble puts me in a hole. You know what I mean? I be wanting to pop my shit, cause I know, I know, right. I'm, I know I'm better than everybody. That's how right. I feel. I know I'm, I know I'm the greatest artist. I just gotta prove it. Mm -hmm. That's really all. That's all it's about. But I feel like I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? But sometimes I gotta do it. Yeah. So that's, that's and it, the little fish theory. It, 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 it goes deeper. It goes very deeper. Um, I'm not gonna say too much, cause it's but it goes deeper. It's, and it's just being, I'm a Pisces, so I'm the okay. little fish in the bay. The big fish is Kamai. Kamai, if you ever see this, I love you. <laughs> Kamai is a big fish, yeah. Yeah, so wait, so, I mean, you, you were talking about, you got some people um, behind the walls, you know, that are hitting you up, yeah. talking about your music. So sure. does that come with the burden now? Are you, are, you, are you hearing them whenever you're in the studio? You're like, okay, I gotta do this for them as well. Um, does it burden me? At, for a second it did, but I asked for this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't you can't ask the universe, you can't pray for something. I want this, I want this. Then when it gets to you, you like, oh, I don't want this no more. You feel me? That's Yeah. It don't work That's what like, comes with it. That's what comes with it. I asked for this shit. Yeah. I I've spent sleepless nights. I spent nights in studios. I right into my hands cramp. I asked for this, you know what I mean? It's no pressure. When it, when it comes to making music, it's no pressure. You know what I mean? This I was born to do this, I was made to do this, so I'm not really tripping off none of that. That just comes with the territory, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, talk about the reception of the tape so far. Uh, it's been beautiful. Uh, <laughs> it's been, I didn't expect it to, uh, I didn't expect it to be this good. Like Bro. like you said, you, you've had it for, you have the tape for a I while. Have, yeah. And you said it was good. My, like the people I played it for, they're like, bro, this is a classic. Yep. But something in me was like, I wasn't doubting me. I wasn't doubting mm -hmm. me. I wasn't doubting me. I was doubting the listeners. And I know not to do that no more. Cause like you said, my sound is different. Right. My, it's unorthodox. People are not used to this approach that I have. You know what I mean? Definitely. And when people are uncomfortable, they like, I don't know, what the, what the fuck is that? I ain't fucking <laughs> with that, you feel me? So um, I doubted that, but when I released it, bro, that shit. It surprised me, it surprised me, you know what I mean? It, it for sure surprised me, it for sure surprised me. That's, that's good to hear. So what songs have people been feeling the most? <sighs> Motherfucking Faded. <laughs> that's, that's people's favorite song. Uh, crazy thing is, that's the first song I made for this project. Wow. That's the first, I made that song when I was 18. Dang. Like two, two, three months after we graduated high school. You know what I mean? Two, three months after we graduated high school, they love Faded. Um, what else? They like? they like the anthem. Uh, they like the, uh, the miseducation of Glenn Terrell. <laughs> uh, Sir. I, I, I didn't, I didn't got every song down there. Every song? Every song. So wait, what's your favorite? Ooh. <laughs> Can you pick or is yeah, it like Yeah, yeah, for children? sure, for sure, for sure. Nah, uh, it's a special song to me. This is my favorite song that's been released to the mm -hmm. world far away. That's my, it's, it's, it's memories by that song, like real memories. Man. Like, I remember why I wrote it. I remember where I was at when I wrote it. I remember when I heard the, when I heard the beat, I got the chills. Yeah. And I remember, I just remember everything. I remember recording it. I remember um, when I got Latrice Love to sing on it. It was just, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I like Far Away, Just Friends. Um, just Friends, that's a, <laughs> I love that song. Just because it's, it's real, it's a true story. Um, them, them, them early ones right there, just far away, just friends, and um, feel your pain, Yo. and parental guidance. Parental guidance, for, for sure. sure. For sure, parental guidance. So, what song do you think people slept on a little bit, or like, what should we revisit? Oh, like, the, uh, they don't give a fuck about us. Yeah, that, near the end. Yeah, it's yeah. It's near the end, so yeah. definitely yep, that, go back and, me personally, that first verse I rap on there, I think that's the best, one of the best verses on the whole tape. Like if you, like if you really hear what I'm saying, that's one of the best verses on the tape, bro. I'm, 
You know what I mean? That's one of the best words on the tape. So, so we gonna definitely have to revisit that one. It's one of the last songs on the tape. So yeah, yeah. And I think they don't get revelations yet. Most people don't like they get it, but they don't get it until like some songs and some things aren't gonna make sense until the next tape comes up. That's good. Yeah, that's, so. that's that's good because like it leaves us waiting. Because even at the end, the the last thing you say, you know, is to be continued. Right? Yes, so, sir. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're going to have another another step to the story, for yeah, sure. for sure, for sure. Yeah. It, it, gets, it, gets, it gets better. So. It gets better. Okay, last question. Last question. Yeah. If you could wrap up this tape with a single sentence, what would it be? Classic. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. The greatest motherfucking mixtape ever I like that hey you you had that ready too you had that ready to go yeah. you didn't even need to think about that nah nah that's how I've been feeling that's, that's good been. it's just it's just about me proving it just about me can stay consistent keep getting better always yeah. hey it's been a pleasure yes sir this has been KJ Kaya Glenn Terrell we appreciate you guys for tuning in Thank you guys so much. Go listen to the tape, and we'll see you guys later. Stack that.